Hey, I'm Edgar Wright, and I'm here to talk about close-ups with Mr. David Chen. I'm a big fan of、um, getting into a scene late and leaving a scene early. That's what they always say in writing: is like sort of、um, come in late and leave early. And I think that using close-ups for me is a good way of doing that. In Shaun of the Dead, the the close-up montages were kind of sort of making fun of action tooling up montages in a way of taking quite. Mundane actions, and and the idea was in Shaun of the Dead that you you have all these mundane actions in the first half, and you finally build up to the final one, which is a gun tooling up montage.、And、usually, tool up montages are about weapons.、Uh, like James Cameron is like the king of like the tooling up montage.、Um, Robert Rodriguez does it. So I I like I like that idea of like like building up to a true action montage. Then in Hot Fuzz, the idea was to subvert that by taking the most boring parts of police work, like paperwork, and making it、uh, super stylized and sort of a- approaching it in the way that Michael Bay or Ridley Scott or Tony Scott would. But that was the idea of taking the boring parts of the job and fetishizing them. People always kind of say, "Oh, you know, that's straight out of Evil Dead 2." And even though I absolutely adore. Uh, those sequences from Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, especially like Martin Scorsese, I think is the king of the close-up. And I think, particularly in like Taxi Driver and Goodfellas, the use of close-ups would always fascinate me. And in fact, strangely enough, on Shaun of the Dead, the director of photography was the camera operator from Goodfellas, David Dunlap. He had shot a lot of those kind of close-ups, including the close-ups of the helicopter in the helicopter scenes in Goodfellas. So I'd always be like、um, in awe of his、uh, like operating skills with some of those close-up sequences. Like you know, doing doing a whip pan onto a close-up of like a mug. There's a there's a bit in Shaun of the Dead where we whip pan onto a mug that Simon is holding, and the easy way to do that, which people do usually, is is reverse it. So you start on the hero shot of the mug and then reverse it. But David was a good enough operator that he could just whip onto it and like land dead center. Which, if you've ever done any camera work, you know that on a long lens, that kind of shot is actually really tricky. I think sort of the thing is when there are transitions, it actually is a way of like you being in control of the the rhythm. That the scenes all have beginnings and ends, and usually transitions are a way of kind of like、um, being in control of that. Is that this is the last shot of the scene, and and the reason is is because somebody walks in front of the camera. Or we black out. Like in Scott Pilgrim, there are some shots where the we just turn the lights off in the stage, which is always a fun thing to do. Is like do it like a theatrical blackout. And if you're watching that movie, there are scenes where the lights go out, and we literally did that on set, where we just like flipped the like the main the main lighting switch, and all the lights would go dead, like you know, off. And it was helpful for the actors because they would really know like this is the last、uh, line of the scene. Boom, the lights are out. It was sort of a way of kind of controlling the. The script. The first movie I ever did, A Fistful of Fingers, I never had enough coverage. Like, it's one of the reasons that like I'm not happy with that movie is it doesn't really feel like anything else I did, mainly because I just didn't get the the coverage and I never had anything to cut away to, so I could never make it go faster. And so I think I'm always like looking at different ways to kind of like、um, keep the pace up of the film. And sometimes the the close-ups is always a good way of doing that. It's like if you start on Somebody's feet coming out of a bus.、Um, that's the start of the shot because you've either got a whip pan or a frame wipe, and Simon's halfway down the stairs, and then you're into the scene rather than seeing a bus pull up, and then Simon gets out, and then it's basically sort of forcing the edits of the stuff that you would cut out anyway, like sort of when people kind of do like a, a shot of a car pulling up outside a house, they might shoot the car com- coming down all the way from the street and then stopping. But you're going to end up cutting out like ninety percent of that setup, so why not just kind of like force force the timing of it? On Shaun of the Dead, all of those close-ups that are in that movie were really hard won. Like they were always always the the shots that would fall off the schedule, and you know if you've got close-ups to do, it would always be that thing where you ran out of time during the day and you never got to that close-up. And on Shaun of the Dead specifically. I would spend an hour before, like, call shooting close-ups, and then I would spend my lunch hour doing it as well, 
So in those two hours outside of the normal shooting day, I had maybe got six extra shots by the end of the day. And nearly all of the close-ups in Shaun of the Dead were done in that fashion. I think because of how they worked in the movies and everybody liked that style, it was never an argument on like Hot Fuzz of like, we've got to get those close-ups. And there's that bit in Hot Fuzz where, where Angel is like um, getting all of the guns from the armory and doing like a proper gun tooling up sequence where I got Simon Pegg to do all of those shots. And Simon even questioned, <laughs> as he should, he says, what do you need me to do? Wouldn't it be better just to get like an armor to do it? But si I said to Simon, I said, but when you see this bit in the movie, it's going to be so cool that you're going to wish that those were your hands doing it. And he goes, oh, okay. So he came in the last day of the, sh the Simon's last day on Hot Fuzz was just him doing all of those gun close-ups. So Simon did those himself. And it, in fact, in Scott Pilgrim as well, like the, the shot of the shoelaces, which is another like close-up montage thing, that's Michael Sarah doing that. You know, you can get com if you if you've got funny comedy timing, you can make that work with just a finger or just a hand. You know, and usually if you leave it to somebody who's like a hand double or like a extra, it will never be as funny as an actor doing it. But I, I guess in World's End there was you know, especially within the fight scenes, they were designed to be much more like long flowing takes and seemingly continuous shots. So there was less need for close-ups in those. It was like a different way of doing those fight scenes. Because we knew that the, um, the actors could pull off the fight scenes, we could design those fight scenes to be in long, continuous takes. With Hot Fuzz, we'd have three cameras going. And on World's End, we had one camera going, because it's like there's power in this continuous shot, which we don't need to cut because the actor can do it, and like it's going to look cooler as a, as a long shot. I, you know, pretty much the last montage you get at the beer is is when um, they are like doing the doing the crawl um, and just pretending to enjoy it. And so I wanted to show like the beer being poured as to sort of take these kind of like advert pack shots, you know, call the the, the product shots in beer commercials and make them increasingly queasy and sinister. <laughs> that was my idea, really. It's because you, you get that in a lot of beer commercials of like, you know, the close up of like actual beer pouring, of making it look like a golden liquid, and to make that increasingly sinister. So by the time you get to pub number six, and there's like a super extreme close up of Fosters being pulled, that it looks somewhat sinister. E even to the idea of having the Fosters logo upside down. I always thought that having the Foster's logo upside down would be like an upside down crucifix. <laughs> so it was like this idea of making the beer shots seem increasingly sinister. And I'm Edgar Wright and The World's End is available on Video On Demand, Blu-ray DVD and in a special Cornetto Trilogy box set as well. Uh, I re highly recommend the, the Blu-ray. It has over three hours of extras and we put so much work into it that I hope you appreciate.